All right. Back to Doki Doki. I want to see something real quick. Ooh, neato. Okay, so that's what that does. All right. Um, let's load our game. Oh yeah, I ended up trying to figure out how to save last time. And we ended up skipping a little bit of the start of the next day. But, oh well. Alright, Yuri. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Uh-huh. You, you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club, and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination. But I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. I can't wait for the festival. Uh, uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Uh, weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Siori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you, all of you people? You are you of all people. Because it's, it's right in your name. mon -aka. Eh. That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that jo joke makes no sense in translation. Hmm? Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Heh. <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Siori's anyways. Excuse me. Where is Siori anyway? Oh, there you are. Siori's sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Siori. I have my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Huh? Yeah, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. You worry too much about me. I'm fine. See? Siori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Siori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Siori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Cow Cow, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Siori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Siori, who's idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the only one asking you, Cow Cow. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She always talks to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. 
I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Hmm. Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Cow Cow. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sori talks about you more than anything else, you know. Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has always has been. You're so funny, Cow Cow. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. Uh, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Siori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sori and gently talk to her but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Siori told me that not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Hey, you! Huh? I look up to see Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute. But we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez, now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to leave you alone and I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. He practically mumbles that last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Siori, that's all. Siori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. Nsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah? Then in that case, I think you should just trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah, I should have thought of it that way from the start. And Suki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She... She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not... Jeez, if you're fine, then let's hurry and get started already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. 
Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make, a, I make eye contact with Mon Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she's talking about with Yuri. All right, well, let's share it with Monica first, as we normally do. Hi, Cow Cow. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see... Anyways, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take a po the poem I'm holding in my hands. I like this one. It makes me think of something Siori would like. Is that so? You and Siori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, oh, well. Well, maybe good friends, but Siori and I are actually really different. Hmm? Well, may that may be the case, but maybe there's also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like you two are... The two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Yuri's writing has a kind of gentle feel to it. I can't tell that she like I can I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knows that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that whatever was sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift the sky victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legend don't exist. legends don't exist. When all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the, the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. And I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Okay. You know... I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that gives life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Ah, are you surprised? I mean, it's every, it, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, uh, yeah, that. Anyway. Here's Monica writing, Monica's writing tip for the day. Are, are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It, can't, it can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling 
you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. All right, well, let's uh, make sure Siori's okay. Let's show her our poem. Hmm, it's nice, I guess. Come on, I already tell you don't like it. Well, well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Huh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Cow Cow. Siori, is there something wrong? Hmm? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sorry. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sorry cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Now she seems really sad, like she's too concerned about us being happy and not about herself. Uh, she seems kind of sad. Alright, well, hopefully she's okay. Uh, we'll talk to uh, Yuri next. Well done, Cow Cow. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing your writing like this. It's a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first. But now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid the whole thing would be a chore. But it's a great way for me to spend personal time with all the girls in the club. But it's fun getting to know everyone and all their writing. And I guess doing some writing myself. Well, haven't you learned anything about yourself, Cow Cow? Huh? Well, you know how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know. As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Huh? Why me? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Oh, is that so? Very thanks for a good minute. I need to get some juice to drink. My blood sugar's low. Ugh. That must be terrible, huh? For me to have to become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. It just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I was overthinking come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked. Yuri, what am I saying? I'm sorry I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to share your poem now? Okay. Here. 
And again, I can't read it because she writes in cursive, but uh, we'll pretend to read it. Um... All right, I think that's enough time has passed you. She'll think that we read it. And we'll just uh, fake it till we make it, right? Just pretend we know what it says. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of a inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Nasuki and I, well... It was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or, th or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have no a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But... Well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know. It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay, and all we got now is a uh, Nozuki. This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. It doesn't blow me away. But there's nothing I really hate about it. It's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. Come to think of it, it kind of reminds me of Shiori's poem from yesterday. Oh, uh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Shiori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so or fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around... A dead weight. Well, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we, we, we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Alright. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminish your wonder over the years, but today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be in the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a, in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea. And let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set, your, set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're, you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me be by your side, your, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. Well, Yuri t Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's... Jeez. She's better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Uh, you can really see her doing that, too. Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyways. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical, too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was a good practice. Okay, so one of them's lying about who requested it. Okay. Okay, you three. 
We're all done sharing a poem, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me or did someone say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. I didn't... Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri is immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is Siori isn't here. Huh? It seems you're right. Sigh. Siori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's always like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Nasuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Oh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and she went home early. How's that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously, of all the times it's not to go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Oh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Siori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh. That curious expression's coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyways, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Nasuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Nasuki? Challenge accepted. And for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sori will be helping me design them. And as for you, Yuri, Yuri, you can, um, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I, I'm useless. No, no, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Now, Natsuki is pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Yuri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Huh? That may be the case, but if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know, so you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I, I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes. And she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be wonderful help, Yuri. But anyways, I need to get another apple juice. Like my hands are getting all shaky all of a sudden. And I'm not having the energy to do all the weird voices for uh, the two uh, babes or bitches. Uh, and that just leaves you, Cow Cow. The one who is truly useless. I don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I'd be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth is it, are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Huh? I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give you a choice. And you shouldn't be sitting around on your butt anyway. Um, if I recall Natsuki, 
You mentioned that you wouldn't like to handle the baking on your own. Kakao may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, uh, maybe more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyways? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Kao Kao to... What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking is it? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Kao Kao to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he, isn't, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. Well, yeah, I do. I would like to spend time with Monica the most. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Kako, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone look straight at me. I want to go with Monica. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me! Hold on one second. Yeah. Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. Uh, but I agree with Mitsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Shiori as well. But Kao Kao's the one who... Uh, that doesn't matter. You're the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. Well, yeah, she's the popular girl. Why would I want to hang out with the popular girl? She's the most purdy. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made in such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, uh, so are you going to do the right thing, President? Oh, is it going to force me to pick someone else? All right, sigh. And it's technically most logical for Kao Kao to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. Damn! Game's gonna cock block me for Monica. Um. I'll help Siori. I mean, it's gonna be anyone that I prefer helping, it's Siori. I mean, we're already neighbors in. But Monica said. Monica said Siori was helping her. Jeez. You really hate us that much? No, no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Uh, I'm... S okay, well, I think baking cupcakes is more fun, so we'll help Masuki. Well, baking sounds like it could be fun. Oh, uh, you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it could probably use two people. Don't worry. Baking is a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. Huh? Eh? Just a minute ago, you were saying that... That's... That's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. That's good. Even though Yuri's being melodramatic, it's a little hard not to feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yes. Everything except the performance is gonna be awesome. I don't think that really counts. What about you, Cow Cow? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. Suki starts pouting too. Ugh. It's not... I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it might not... It might not be just that. I think that Yuri might just be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then nobody offering to help. That doesn't mean... Nah. Nizuki glances back in between everyone with a worried expression. Look, 
And Suki goes over and puts her hand down on Yuri's shoulders. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here. And, and you're going to help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too, but you're going to make the atmosphere special. That will be really important for the way that people feel during the performances. So, you need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. Mizuki releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? Um, no, not really, but here isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by N Nisuki's words. Nisuki, of all people, to be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. Nisuki was trying to sound like Siori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Siori would say at a time like this. Because Siori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with what? There's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a little longer. I barely got to do any reading today, so... Fair enough, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. Uh, where are you going? Hmm? We still need to figure out our plans for the weekend. Let me save. So I could save here, right? Just overwrite those two. Literally wouldn't have gotten home and realized that you didn't even have a way to contact me. Oh, that's true. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? You better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? Hmm. Masuki gives me her number. Okay. I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait, you're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean, I just figured that since I'm the one helping, I would be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like, I could have a guy over at my house. My dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I can do anything when... I can't do anything when my dad is home. Anyway, I just needed to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah. I'm really gonna show you why I love baking so much. So you better look forward to it. Oh. Didn't you say you were just going to give me the dirty work? Well, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like it in front of everyone. That I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never get to bake with someone else before. That's all it is, so... Alright, I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyway, I'll be heading out now. See you on Sunday. Ah. Never mind. Right, I can't believe this. is gonna be coming to my house on Sunday. Even though I would've preferred to do it with Siori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Siori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Mon Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Nitsuki's upcoming visit. Ugh. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. We send each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into a conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emoji and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. But putting Natsuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from Siori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Siori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Siori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decided to visit Siori before Natsuki comes over. 
Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Story's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Story isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Siori? Hi, Cow Cow. I sit down in her room. Siori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I guess. Are you alright? It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sawyer's room is messy as it's always been. I always recognize the same stuffed animals and well de wall decorations that she's had for years now. Eh, if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Natsuki today? Yeah, but wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided the last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Oh, that's true. But what about you? Are you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything, and so it's just me and Natsuki then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I'll finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when, the, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sorry smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, cow cow. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this is just punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sorry. I grab Siori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh... Siori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Cow Cow. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Siori? Uh, you're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Cow Cow? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Oh man, poor thing. I mean, I, I've, I've dealt with depression in real life too. Maybe that's why me and her are so alike. Uh, well, maybe we can cheer her up. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late at school every day? Because most days I can't find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Siori? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. 
That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Cow Cow. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have, you'd have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why, that's why I decided that it would just, the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Siori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Cow Cow. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears strike down Siori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish, and I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. Oh no you're not, Siori. That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments, because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Siori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. We just need to give her a hug. Cow Cow, Siori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Cow Cow, Siori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Siori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Cow cow. I... Siori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make the, these feelings go away. If there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently Sori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Cow Cow. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm and that's really scary too. Sorry, let me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. Um, it's going to be fun, alright? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, that's what I want. I promise. I think that'd be nice then. Yeah. Siori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Nusuki to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? It's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Siori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. 
But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Nasuki's about to come over too, so I think Siori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. Oh uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying, um, sorry I didn't catch it right away. Yeah, I'm really enjoying, um, Doki Doki Literature Club so far. Uh, yeah, it's great to see you. Sorry if I uh, was late to respond, I was reading, so. I was really en uh, engrossed in the text. But yeah, so far, uh, Doki Doki Literature Club is a lot of fun, so. Um, I'm gonna end up, uh, finishing the part where I do the cupcakes and then probably just end it there because I gotta get ready for stuff today. Usually Saturdays is a bit busy for me. Alright, I spend only a few minutes back at home, anxiously awaiting for Nasuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without a delay, I open the front door to let her in. Sup? Hey. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes made the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make it feel awkward already. It's gonna be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Natsuki is carrying a large bag that is probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good. Glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised to hear Nisuki suddenly saying that rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she's a little different outside of school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. What you're not gonna... Wait. What you're not even gonna offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, Cow Cow? Come on. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag and Natsuki holds out to me. This is ridiculously heavy. Huh. I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah, I am impressed, Natsuki. It seems like I always underestimated you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. Natsuki hits a fist into my chest. Hey! Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Uh, hmm. It's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than other people. But, geez, never mind. What are you make? What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I got to teach you. Uh huh. What? It's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Ugh. Hey. Now you're treating me like a kid. I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know. And just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you should treat me like... Uh... Mitsuki catches her words and face turns red. Mitsuki, forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. Uh, I appreciate that you're trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Uh, how would you know that anyway? Just trust me on this one. Gross! Hey, was that to me? Who else? Man, let's just get started already. Okay. You get all sour when a girl calls you gross. I finally found your weakness, Cow Cow. Suki smiles deviously. Please spare me. 
Well, if Nasuki decided to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's satisfied enough for now, finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flowers, spilled fluid, and plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we had to do it at several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up with the precious baking. Where did you put the food coloring? Uh, the batter is going to be in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. Where are you using it for? To color the batter. Okay, someone's calling me real quick. Just give me a moment. I think they're, uh, they were calling just to see uh, if I need to be picked up later. All right. To color the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different color. That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Ah, oh, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Ah, you're asking me. I don't really have a preference, so... Oh, come on. You're not putting any heart into this at all. Can't you at least try to have fun? I am having fun. I'm not really sure what Nusuki's trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I'll see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring into each. All that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end if you're just looking at it. it makes everyone's eyes lighten up. Like the one you made on my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cupcakes and Siori and Monica delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah. Maybe I will use the food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you're completely finished mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We're using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Huh? Icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Geez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Nizuki grabs a whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Nizuki sticks a finger on the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey! Nizuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want you gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, huh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger toward the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I'll try to s I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for a finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop, one scoop some with my finger, just as Nuzuki tugs with all her might. Ah. The force of Nuzuki's pull on me causes me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. Gross. You got it on my face. Whose fault is that? There's a big glob of icing on Nusuki's cheek. Mm. She tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez. Uh, you know what? Take this. Nusuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger toward my own face. You wish. I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. Nusuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Uh, stop. Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know. Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me. You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably should do this. I shouldn't do this either. I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth looking off the icing. What? Did you seriously just, huh? Nusuki is surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. 
Her face is entirely red. Cow Cow, you really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls unless you really like them. You know that, right? What kind of question is she asking me just like that? How did the moon turn to this so quickly? Azuki gazes me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy, huh? Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. Zuki rushes to the oven. There's something burning. I thought you didn't put out the cupcakes yet. Ugh. No wonder. You left dirty tray in here, dummy. How could you make a mistake like that? You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez. Nasuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it out on the top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyways, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. The tension from the moment before still lingers over your heads, but the moment has already been lost. I watch as Nizuki slides the cupcake trays into the oven, then reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with the icing like nothing ever happened. Ah, it smells so good. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven, and as soon as Nizuki opens up the door, a blast of sweet smelling warm air fills the room. Look at how cute they all look. She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They all look even better once we add icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I've brought decorated stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. And then she hands me the bags. I have these nozzles that will make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make a flowers. We'll probably won't be using it this time, though. What's this one for? Oh, that one's really thin, so you can use it to make stripes and other patterns. But you can also use it to write stuff on the cake. Like, happy birthday or whatever. I see. Ugh. That gives me an idea, actually. Eh? Well, it's a literature event, right? We could make even more literature themed by writing different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people who choose their cupcakes based on words they like. I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid. That's actually a really cute idea, so... Maybe I'm getting it from you. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Come on. We're not at school. Nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. <sighs> Hold on a minute. Alright, sorry about that. Alright, Nasuki voice trails off. Same with you. Did he say something? No, nothing. Let's just do the icing. Nasuki picks up the pace and fastens a nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about it before, Natsuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing and then we each get to work. When we're finally finished, Natsuki puts them all side by side to admire our work. Look at how pretty they are together. Yeah, there are, aren't they? I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but... My dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. Sorry, the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, it would probably be down 10 cupcakes already. And she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway, I was hoping we would have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Alrighty. That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. 
it's not like you'll always have that this chance. Man, as usual, Nasuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Suri each carry some, then you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And I don't worry, I won't let her eat any. Uh -huh. I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Yeah. I felt so helpless. Sarah always does listen to me, but at the point it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Just like that, Natsuki is already about to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that. Did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted? Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki, huh? What you said before about not always having this chance, it doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking can be like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over any time, okay? I think that it's possible I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga, go out somewhere. Um, do you really mean that? Suki looks at me more tensely like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah, I want to spend more time with you. Cow cow, I thought you only cared about getting this done. Hmm, I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... So you suddenly gets closer to me. Wait, Nasuki. Standing inches from me, Nasuki looks up at me. I feel her fingers gently clench at the sides of my shirt as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? My head starts to go dizzy and I feel soft. Her soft breaths against me. I've felt it for a while now. Uh, Nasuki suddenly jumps back. Siori? Eh? Uh... Hi, Cow Cow. Sorry. Just now we weren't. Uh -huh. It's okay, Cow Cow. I just stopped by to say hi. Ah. Uh, well, you shouldn't have come a little earlier. I've already on my way out, so. Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later. Coolly flustered, Nasuki hurries off, and Sori waves goodbye. Siori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Oh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Natsuki, and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Siori's face. That's all that matters to me. No, that's not that all that matters to you, Suri. Stop lying to me. Why am I feeling this way, Cow Cow? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. No, don't do that. You're the best girl, Suri. Suri, don't say that. It's true, Cow Cow. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sorry, but I said before is true. I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you like you... Caring about you like this isn't the burden you mind it making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes my an entire lifetime, I'm gonna be by your side until you feel... Don't feel any more pain. But... Sori looks away. I put a hand over her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Cow Cow. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, of Siori? I'm scared that that I might like you more than you like me. Siori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Cow Cow, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Siori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Siori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Siori nods. 
And if you, even if you don't understand all your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give to you. Um... See, I don't think it'd be good for us to date her, because, um... Well, one, if her happiness just depends on us, right? I, I don't think that's good for her. And not only that, um... Like, obviously, I do think Siori's personality type is, like, ideal for someone like me, other than the depression part. Um... But, um, I don't... I think it's better for her to, um, kind of... For us to just be friends, still, you know. Plus, we want to aim, we want to aim high. We want to get on, we want to get with Monica. So, um, you'll always be my dearest friend. We need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but. Please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promised I'll help get things back to the way they were. I, I see. Sori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. If this is what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest, I should write a poem about this. Sori, it's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish, so please. Please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here, just so I can get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing, you've also right that I just want to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone else, Cow Cow. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So, Tori's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Clenching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sori looks over her shoulder and flashes me over one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sori! I'm left helplessly standing in the front of my house. While I'm feeling so horrible about this... There's nothing more than I could have done. The most I can do is support Siori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Siori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if she should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Siori will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. In the day of the festival, of all the days I expected, this is this to be where I'll be walking to school with Siori. But Siori isn't answering her phone. I'm considering going to her house to wake her up, but sorry, that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry the cupcakes myself, but carefully stacking two trays... Mitsuki's already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Mitsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time without with, with Siori and Mitsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Alright, well, we'll um, save here. And then uh, we'll probably play this for about an hour again tomorrow. Um, hopefully nothing bad opens the story. I don't want her to um, kill herself. I was, uh, I'm hoping to, because um, like, I was listening to her, and um, I'm wondering if it's like some sort of mind game, where it's like if you date her, but if you were to listen to what she was complaining about earlier... Uh, and you do the opposite of what she wants, she'll kill herself or something. So I don't know how that works. So that, that's one of the reasons I also chose to um, just stay friends with her. So um, anyways, I hope uh, you all have a um, good day. And uh, hopefully next week is uh, good for you all. And uh, 
Uh, it's good to see uh, Ruffles uh, in the chat. So, anyways, I'll see you later. Goodbye.